opening word is from um, John O'Donoghue, and it's called <laughs> Bana, which is the Gaelic word for an Irish blessing. There's another Gaelic word in this reading that is Kurach, which is the Gaelic word for a boat. It's covered in canvas. On the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders and you stumble, may the clay dance to balance you. And when your eyes freeze behind the gray window and the ghost of loss gets into you, may a flock of colors, indigo, red, green, and azure blue come to awaken in you, a meadow of delight. When the canvas frays in the curl of thought and the stain of ocean blackens beneath you, may there come across the waters a path of yellow moonlight to lighten you safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be yours, may the clarity of light be yours, May the fluency of the ocean be yours. May the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so may a slow wind work these words of love around you, an invisible cloak to mind your life. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all who are dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen.
second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation for love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Years ago, when I was working as a mental health counselor at an agency, the following stanza, the first stanza, was posted on a large easel uh, as we entered the door from Emily Dickinson's poem, Hope. It greeted us all, clinicians and patients alike, as we entered that front door. Hope is the thing with feathers which perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Lately, I have been thinking a lot about hope. What does it mean? A myriad of outer challenges are converging in this time. The virus, racial issues, 
election problems, climate devastation, many things. And I find myself at times feeling storms of grief, despair, outrage, and fear. On a personal level too, like some of you perhaps, I've not seen my family, my sons and their families since before the pandemic began. While I'm so grateful for FaceTime and Zoom, which allows us to connect, I do miss seeing them in person, giving them hugs. Daily news also overwhelms me and I excavate for hope. Where is it? Over the years, my understanding of hope has gradually changed. When I was a child, it was always tied to an outcome, like getting a much wanted doll at Christmas or for a birthday, or later having just the perfect boyfriend, or even to work hard enough to become famous at something. But as I found out, through many years, many of these types of wishes and expectations may not come to fruition. Sometimes when that happened in the past, I would plunge into despair if something I had worked hard on did not have the outcome I'd hoped for. But in her wonderful book, Mystical Hope, Reverend Cynthia Bourgeau says there is a kind of hope not tied to specific outcomes. Rather, it's an abiding way of being. She distinguishes this hope from grace, saying that grace seems to come from outside us, and whereas the depth of hope is a spring within. And she encourages us to make a deep connection to this wellspring so that we may be chalices of mercy and love. A silver lining in the isolation of the pandemic has been time spent connecting more and more for me to this current of the Holy One who lives deep within. I've been fortunate to know various spiritual centers that have offered retreats and contemplative groups on Zoom to foster and deepen this relationship to the true charity and love of God as we sang in Ubi Caritas. Another benefit of these online retreats has been engaging in communities with people all over the world whom I never would have had the chance to meet without these opportunities. One retreat I attended last week was from the Benedictine Mepkin Abbey and it was on Julian of Norwich. Some of you have probably heard of her. She was a woman who lived in a time very similar to ours, the plague in England in the Middle Ages, in an enclosure called an anchorage attached to the church of St. Julian. Not only was the plague there, but there were also wars, and the general church punished heretics by burning them at the stake. Julian, not her real name, was actually walled in to beside the church with two small windows, one which looked out at the altar of the church and the other overlooked the street where she would counsel people who came to seek her advice. In this enclosure, she developed deeply her relationship to her inner anchorage, the place of God in her soul, and wrote, wrote about her theology in a manuscript called Showings based on the vision she'd had some years before in a near-death experience. However, she kept her writings hidden because they were not thought of as theologically correct by the standards of the church, and she would have been punished as a heretic. But despite all the turmoil, devastation, and death outside, she drew from her intimate connection with Christ within and poured the fruits of the Spirit, peace, love, mercy, equanimity, presence, and joy into a hurting world in a true sense of unity with all. She lived from that state of abiding mystical hope. I've begun to realize that living in hope starts with knowing I'm always living in the mercy and love of God, which is not only within, but also around us, and that I have a responsibility 
to bring that energy, those fruits of the spirit to our world as Julian did for hers. I see people, I've seen people since starting this pandemic, extending their love and mercy in many ways in our community. Here at St. Albans, the masks that people made for us to use, also the um, checking up with St. Albans Cares, the food pantries in St. Elizabeth's, and the wonderful project with Haiti, the school that we heard more about last week. And in communities, people are coming together. There are library offerings among the communities, including a united reading of a book called This is Chance about how Anchorage, Alaska came together as a community to rebuild and heal from the massive earthquake in 1964. So there are many wonderful things that I can go on and list, but um, that, that I, I wouldn't be able to name them all. Wonderful things, people coming together. I see my work as to keep room in my heart wide open for God to fill so that I can hear the singing in my soul like that thing, the little bird with feathers in Emily Dickinson's poem, despite the gales around. For me, it involves letting go of some things. One thing is letting go of a rather compulsive need to check out the news often, or letting go of my tumultuous thoughts and emotions as they occur. Practices like centering prayer or gardening, meditative body practice like yoga or qigong, help me to hold fast to that great love of the Holy One which sustains us and to serve what is before me from that source of presence with integrity and compassion without regard from, uh, for outcome. I have always loved this saying from the Talmud, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now, love mercy now, walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work but neither are you free to abandon it. So I pray for myself and all of us to be instruments of this abiding hope in these times.
prayers for ourselves and others. Loving God, in faithfulness we pray. That you will rouse us from sleep and make us alert to anticipate the nearness of your presence. Fearing God, may we follow closely in your lead. That this may be a season to discover your word in the light of this world, your touch in every human embrace, and your love in every gesture of sacrifice between us. Generous God, redeem our anxieties and fears. Turn them into new hope and confidence. That your grace may bring our hearts to fresh awareness and make us see with uncovered eyes Christ who suffers with his world in its troubles. Seeing God, give us eyes to see beyond the obvious. That you and we may hold close all those in any kind of pain. That they may know Christ's healing, wholeness, confidence, and peace. Especially those we name now, silently or aloud. Let us pray for Robin, Marjorie and Stacy, Nancy, Tracy, David, Liz, Cameron, Anne, Kathy, Lynn, Liz, Ellen, Tom, Priscilla, Lena, Mike, Pete, and Lynn. Are there others? Ellen. Act of God, renew us as people of service and compassion. May the works of our lives demonstrate your love. We also pray for the repose of the souls of Lisa McKinnis and Megan Teal Monahan, both of whom died recently, and to remember Jim Croft on the first anniversary of his death. My uncle Leonard. And I pray for, for Matt, Sally, and Scott. May we recognize in our humble gathering for prayer and thanksgiving that you are here with us to inspire our songs with your dreams. The Memorial Garden Labyrinth, in memory of Amanda and friends. And we also want to remember Hannah Rockefeller and Allison Sybil Deanstang, who will be baptized on October 25th. Enlightening God, may we accept the gifts of your spirit. That your coming into the days of our own human history may always be new and bring with light to drive darkness away. Hopeful God, refresh in all people the will for good, the capacity for forgiveness, and the longing for peace. God of grace, Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to trust in the knowledge and love of you and each other. And give courage and faith to those who are bereaved that they may have the strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of hope. Receive our prayers and in your grace, answer them as may be best for us. Amen. God of wonder, you have called us to know you and to make you known. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and your peace. Amen. God of surprises, infuse us with your wild wonder. Sustain us in the daily practice of opening our hearts to grace. Expand our imagination to see more widely than before. Open our hearts to experience compassion beyond our dreams. Call us to begin again and again. Amen. 
I invite you to unmute yourselves at this time as we say together the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven. Your, your will be done, will be done. On, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today forgive us our sins. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. 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 Well, good evening and welcome to St. Albans, Celtic Eventide. Um, I want to draw your attention to the links that are on your bulletin, um, just below the, the announcements title. Um, a bit of everything to help you stay connected, be connected, and help us to connect Wanted to say a couple of other announcements um, just to um, welcome all of you to participate on Sunday mornings in the um, either eight o'clock or 11 o'clock outside in person Holy Eucharist. So do come, uh, feel, feel welcome, feel invited. It'd be great to see you there um, on Sunday morning. Following uh, the service tonight, we'll have an open conversation. Uh, the thought was maybe to um, every now and then have an opportunity to ask me questions about what's, well, whatever's on your mind. So um, tonight will be one of those. We'll have a large group opportunity for that. That's all I've got. Good to see you all. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity, amen. 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 Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God.
Great music.